Good evening. What's going on there, guys? Thanks for checking in here. It's the Earthmaster back at it on this Friday night. Party night for a few out there. Uh, June 9th, 2023. It's about 10.30 p.m. here along the West Coast. And the uh, latest activity looks like a 2.5 down here uh, into the Middle America Trench, one of the latest earthquakes there on the globe. Seen uh, a little bit of uptick here across the last 24 hours. Of course, we did have a 5.9 Originally coming in as a 6.0 down here along this uh, triple point plate boundary. Uh, looks like it may be just north here a little bit from that plate boundary uh, triple point area. But still, uh, somewhat of a large earthquake there, 5.9, near the Macquarie Island area. Now a little bit, uh, well, just a couple minutes later, I should say. As you can see here, 5.9, about uh, 13 minutes, 12, 13 minutes later, we had a 4.8 up here around Tonga. So... Definitely still seeing some adjustment out here along this plate boundary. Uh, and again, that kind of puts New Zealand right there in the watch zone, uh, so to speak, for earthquake activity. Um, looking at the GeoNet servers here, uh, stand by for just a second. I'll bring those up and see what we have here. Uh, looks like a 2.5, four hours or so ago. Uh, that's at least one of them listed up there on the map. Uh, and we should see, definitely should see the six-pointer from earlier on one of these graphs. Even though that was a ways down there, very, uh, for the most part, sometimes that will show up on the graphs here. But I'm really not seeing uh, too much of a strong signature from that six-pointer. As uh, far as local seismic activity goes, there to the New Zealand area... Um, somewhat minimal, not a whole lot going on currently. It's awfully quiet uh, looking at these charts here. And I believe these are updated, right? Yeah, their time, they're living in the future. Uh, June 10th already, 17 <laughs> New Zealand time there. All right, well, uh, again, I would definitely watch this area for some movement. Uh, far as the rest of the map goes here, let's see if we got anything going on across the area. Uh, mostly smaller activity um, across the Indonesia region as we zoom in here. Uh, we did see a little bit of deeper activity following that movement down south with a 4.5 into the Mariana Trench. This one uh, pretty deep, 144 kilometers deep. Definitely uh, trying to make its way uh, up here around the plate boundary. Uh, also here into the Kurokamachaka Trench, that one from early this morning. I wanted to bring up the uh, images here of the general plate movement here. Uh, i got to remember uh, the Australia plate here, the interaction between the Pacific plate and the Antarctica plate down here would create a uh, triple point junction down here in this zone where we've seen that 5.9. Uh, and with that adjustment that we've seen at Tonga, it just kind of tells me that the uh, Pacific Plate is definitely uh, wanting to push further west and add strain out here along the Filipino Plate. But also at the same time, that could spell some trouble up here around the Kurokamachaka Trench. So we'll uh, continue to watch that. Right now, just that one earthquake that was from, uh, again, early this morning. Continue to keep that area in mind uh, along with New Zealand as well. Uh, let's see, but definitely a little bit of deeper movement here across the Indonesia area, Papua New Guinea. Uh, getting a little cluster of activity here around the Sumatra area, Java Trench. It's going to be these threes kicking up here. Not a whole lot showing up on the USGS map, but uh, looks like a 4.6 from earlier this morning. Uh, as far as the rest of the globe goes here, most of the movement across the Mediterranean here. Uh, somewhat minor and we do have a 4.0 there in the Mediterranean region um, and some activity around Turkey but for the most part it's all very uh, common 5.5 uh, way down here in the South Atlantic Ocean out here on a uh, fracture zone a little divergent boundary that one coming in uh, earlier this afternoon time frame a little bit of movement up north here as well into the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Central Mid-Atlantic Ridge, that is. Uh, I believe that earthquake from early this morning, looks like. Let's see what we got here for the uh, west coast. Still getting a 
fairly good clutter of activity here into the Northern California region. This has definitely been showing some heightened activity over the past few days and uh, very consistent with the level there, the depth below the surface of the subduction zone area, which is the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, and this is just upstream from where the trimmer activity takes place here on the map. By the way, let's check out trimmer uh, and see what we got going on here. Hopefully, pnsn.org slash trimmer is the site. That's a little slow, but as uh, far as the count goes, looks like uh, it's going down. Only 12 epicenters of trimmer. Now, trimmer activity is uh, uh, basically a slow slip event. You know, a lot of most people don't call it an earthquake because an earthquake is a sudden release of built up strain. This is more or less like a, uh, um, a, a uh, uh, slow slip event that is between the Juan de Fuca plate here um, to the west. Uh, that's being slowly subducted and pushed underneath the North American plate. But sometimes we get these tremor events occurring downstream here, about 45 kilometers or so. Uh, and that's just, you know, obviously adding further strain upstream. Uh, and I think, I think that's kind of what we're seeing right here in Northern California, though no tremor counts have been recorded in here. But uh, you know, this is basically what I have to work with here in terms of getting trimmer data. Uh, I just have to take their word for it that this is the accurate, uh, accurate graph here. Just seems a little odd with uh, all this activity ramping up here and uh, no trimmer occurring downstream. Uh, either way, definitely uh, watch that area in Northern California for some further movement with that setup. A uh, pretty good swarm of activity. Uh, Tehachapi area looks like having a 1.1. I don't think we got anything major going on here across California. Let me bring up the, uh, or at least Southern California, 2.5 map and above. Not a whole lot going on there, folks. Most of it all small microquake activity across even Southern California. Uh, Yellowstone, nothing going on over there. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at the Yellowstone seismographs. Looks about uh, looks about the same as what it's been here over the past couple weeks. No major swarm, no major uh, activity going on. A little spike of an earthquake here near Little West Thumb, but that's about it. And Texas and Oklahoma has been uh, fairly spotty as well. Eastern portion of the country, all quiet. Uh, down around the Puerto Rico area looks like a few smaller quakes being reported there um there's that 2.5 into the um well that's well south of the middle america trench that's going to be off the coast maybe costa rica area it looks like there on the globe uh, all right south america region got uh, at least one earthquake being reported here 4.1 into the peru chile trench as uh, far as the other activity, it looks like smaller microquake movement there across the region. Just been a mixed bag of earthquakes, it seems like, uh, over the past couple days. Um, like I say here, folks, the 5.9 here and the movement up in Tonga. Gotta, gotta watch that New Zealand area pretty closely here. They're right along that plate boundary. And um, I think that spells a little bit of trouble there with all the movement we witnessed, uh, not only today here, north and south of the region, but uh, overall the sevens and the sixes and whatnot that we've seen up north here, all the activity along the Antarctica um, and the Australia plate boundary um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what else do we have? Alaska? Got to be beautiful up there this time of year. A lot of sunshine. Mostly smaller microquakes. It looks like a little activity here across the Trident Volcano. I don't think we've got anything major going on with that. The hazard notification system here from the uh, Alaska area. Let's see. Trident Volcano. This was put out today, it looks like. Uh, let's go down here, see if we can find it. Naga, Trident Volcano. Um, this 
Seismicity beneath the volcano remained elevated over the past week with numerous earthquakes detected each day. Uh, let's see, the current period of seismic unrest began back on the 24th. We noticed that last year. Increases in seismic activity has been be detected previously at Trident Volcano and other similar volcanoes with no subsequent eruptions. So uh, we expect additional shallow seismicity and other signs of unrest such as gas emissions, elevated surface temperatures, and a ground movement to precede any future eruption if one were to occur. So right now, just a little earthquake activity. Uh, and far as the Kilauea volcano there on the big island, let's see what we got here. Daily update. Currently erupting. Uh, eruptive activity is confined to the crater within the summit caldera, within the Kilauea summit caldera. So no unusual activity has been noted. Multiple minor fountains remain active on the western crater floor and the vent. Uh, let's see. Summit tilt has remained deflationary over the past 24 hours. It looks like summit seismicity activity is dominated by eruptive tremor. Um, yeah, just it's continuing. Doesn't look like any uh, major changes. This could just be the future uh, wording from the USGS for the uh, foreseeable future with this volcano. We've seen it in the past months at a time. Uh, a look at the seismograph station here. Very minimal activity at best. You can see that uh, it doesn't look like any blockage, any type of buildup going on. Just a free flow type of movement with the magma reaching um, to the surface. Up here around Mauna Loa, probably about the same. I don't think we got any earthquake activity going on. No unusual activity uh, that I can see there across the volcano. Tilt meters up there. Uh, let's see if we got any working. Yeah, doesn't look like it huge volcano and it they don't have anything um, that works properly I don't think all right not gonna spend too much time on that uh, moving on space weather activity well looking at the graph here this is the last three days of solar weather activity far as flaring goes we did have that M flare here uh, yesterday or late last night uh, but since then things have kind of mellowed out here not a whole lot going on as far as the uh, flaring goes oops let's go back here so let's see what we have I don't know the internet's been kind of weird earlier the stream went down had all sorts of internet issues so I think we're good right now, but still seems a little, little slow for some reason. Well, look at this, folks. Look, look at this. Everything. That was kind of weird. I'm not hitting any back button. It's just really weird. Some weird stuff still going on with the computer. Electronics in general. Uh, but far as complex structures here, this has really died off drastically same with this spot here as well there's not a whole lot of super active regions here uh, far as complex or unstable type of of uh, sunspot areas yes there's obviously numerous some sun sunspots but they're not uh goodness they just died off rapidly i guess if we have to pick one maybe this area still harbors a little bit of potential not a whole lot going on across the eastern limb of the sun as well um, right now it looks like 99% chance for a C flare. I think these will drop though. M flare at 25% chance, X flare at 5. And, uh, unfortunately not a whole lot going on for the auroras. Uh, and then again, this time of year up there in Alaska, it's still daylight. So not going to really see too much up there, right? As far as the, uh, aurora prob probability goes. But, uh, doesn't look like too much coming up here, folks. Three day... Geomagnetic forecast calls for fairly calm conditions to prevail. This almost looks like a face here. Got 11 and 12 here, coronal holes along with 10. The sun does not look very happy. Looks a little on the uh, sad side. If I had to guess his um, demeanor, uh, his expression, 
the sun's expression, I should say. Um, yeah. Let's see what else we have here. Anything going on across the uh, weather department here? Looks like maybe a little enhanced risk coming on tomorrow for um, some severe weather across a good portion of Texas here. Dallas, Waco area, down to Austin. 2% probability of tornadoes. And it uh, looks like main threat, though, is going to be some large damaging hail within the hatched area. Could see 10% um, or greater probability of at least 2 inch diameter hail, at least. I ran into that in Texas uh, last time I was out there, there uh, back in May. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, numerical models here. Just want to look at the big picture once again. See what we got here for any major weather changes. Um, going to check out the North America region here and uh, just see what we have way out in the future. With these patterns here, you got low pressure systems and troughs indicating cooler weather or stormier weather, rain. Uh, of course, the orange here indicative of a ridging high pressure system here uh, that can spell heat so you can look at these and um, you know get a good idea of what could be coming up here as we put this into motion we do have that high pressure system off the um, Pacific Northwest coast that could spell some heat for California but it doesn't last long well hopefully it doesn't last long I'm not in the mood to deal with any 100 degree temperatures but looks like all the way out into june 20th the west coast still remains cool uh with some uh, rainy stormy and rainy conditions out here that's uh pretty awesome very unusual very unusual summer for us Somebody was mentioning about some hurricane or something coming up. Let me see what we got with the GFS model. Um, maybe around the June 22nd time frame. And, and still, you can't... You have to kind of take this with a, a grain of salt. Maybe a micro, micro size grain of salt. Uh, because this is way out here and patterns can change. But as of right now, one of the GFS models showing what looks like potentially a major hurricane entering into the Gulf of Mexico and uh, hitting the Texas area, it looks like. Uh, west of Galveston. Maybe potentially around Baytown, it looks like. And then, uh, of course, bringing up a whole bunch of moisture into Oklahoma and, and maybe Kansas. But again, this is way out there. Uh, but this is just one weather model showing that potential coming into the Gulf. So we'll continue to watch that. You know, these things can change um, by each model run. But right now, still showing a little bit of activity there into the Gulf. Uh, with a hurricane around the 22nd of June. So we'll continue to watch that and report on that. Alright folks, I am going to call it a night. I hope I can sleep better tonight. Last night, I don't know what's going on. Just weird one of those things that just you know sleep patterns are very odd lately all right guys have a good night stay safe out there and don't forget member drawing is coming up in six days make sure you become a member here on this channel so you can be entered into the drawing of course not only the, the drawing benefits but you guys do get uh some extra videos extra perks extra emojis icons and um extra posts we do um you know uh, member only videos and member only posts and stuff like that which is you know just a little added benefit to being a, a member here on the channel and we do appreciate it been doing this for about a, a year now at least a membership uh, deal uh, the YouTube videos obviously longer since about 2006 is when I jumped here on the YouTube network already hope everyone has a good night Please stay safe out there, and we'll see you guys back here tomorrow, bright and early.